I thought I'd take a bit of an anthropomorphic or an egocentric approach. I thought it'd make it all about me. Talk about a human being living in the tropics. So I actually went and looked up some tropical textbooks that were written over a hundred years ago to see if we'd learned anything new. We have, we parasitologists pride ourselves, especially in Australia, of knowing the latest molecules, getting vaccines developed, doing this, doing that. But literally when it comes to the diseases that these parasites cause, we haven't changed much in a hundred years, regrettably. So ladies and gentlemen, living in the tropics, from my exploration of the literature, we have a history of misery and suffering. <laughs> so, let's look at it. Let's define what the tropics are. It's that belt that goes around the world where, for one day at least, the sun is directly overhead. It's marked by the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. It's 30% of our planet. 60% of the rainfall falls here. So, the tropics, it's warm and wet. It's inhabited. 40% of the humans that live on this planet live in the tropics. World Health, World Health Organization has worked out that that will be up to about 60% in the next 25 years. So, it's a veritable haven for a lot of the humanity on this planet, right? Look at Australia. We have this Tropic of Capricorn running through almost the middle of Australia. So let's look at that. The arrow is pointing at Cairns. That way, that's where we are. We're definitely within the tropics. Half of our continent is literally there. So can human beings survive in the tropics? We need to survive the environment. People talk about reef and rainforests, but living in northern Australia, dirt and dust, isn't it? We've got deserts, we've got everything up there. We've got to survive the climate. We know it's warm and wet. We've got to survive predators. Well, there are things out there. Well, we don't have lions and tigers. We've got crocodiles and sharks and all those sorts of things. Look at the pests that we've just been talk, told about. We've got the world's worst everything. <laughs> and the pathogens. We've started talking about parasites, but we haven't even addressed the viruses, the bacteria, and all the other things that are out there. So, can human beings survive in the tropics? We know the tropics is this inhospitable, harsh environment. It's a dreadful place to live. Look at, this <laughs> Look at the geology, this hard baked earthen floor, the clay pans. Look at the hydrology, an open water source, unchlorinated, unfilled. Oops, there's a filter in the background. <laughs> Look at the flora, these great big palm trees. They don't even produce coconuts. What a stupid plant. <laughs> but all the sharks ate them all. And into this environment, a hundred years ago, our government was paying. White races could not live in the tropics. And there are publications out there. So how could a civilised man live in the tropics? <laughs> Get it? It's amazing what you can do with a digital camera and a swimming pool somewhere. Can we live in the tropics? If I strip the trappings, of civilization. <laughs> if I take it all off, can we actually survive? <laughs> I'm not going to go any further. <laughs> Exposed to the elements, white pale skins, we would wither and die. We can learn from the locals, go native. <laughs> I've been to some shops down at Palm Cove, and this is what they sell. This is local attire. But again, that solar radiation up there means I'm going to burn to a crisp, so I need to do this protection. Slip, slop, slap. So we've established that 100 years ago they thought we couldn't live here. Of course we can. We can survive in the tropics, but will we thrive in the tropics? Infectious tropical diseases are so widespread right throughout Africa. South America, India, Southeast Asia. Look at this. This is the distribution of malaria. Look at Australia. We think we're wonderfully protected there, but remember, half of our continent is in the tropics. So what we need to do is have a look at some of these diseases and see why Australia thinks it's protected. Parasitology. This is why we're here at this conference. In my experience over 40 years, I've learned that we have a rule of threes. 
There are three main sites of infection in the human body. Gastrointestinal tract, mouth to bum. The bloodstream and the tissues and the organs that get in there. So we have three main sites of infection. <laughs> if you get infected in the gut, it's going to come out one end or the other, isn't it? So it's, you have enteritis. If you get infected in the blood, you end up with fevers. If you get infected in the organs, it can cause all sorts of horrible lesions. When we look at the roots of infection, if you're infected in the gut, it's obvious you're going to be dealing with a fecal oral pathogen. Something goes in, comes out, and that's how it gets from host to host. So fecal oral route of transmission. The vector-borne ones, the blood parasites, how do I take my blood and give it to this person? A mosquito does it for me, a sand fly does it for me. So we have lots of vector-borne transmission. And for organs, we end up with predator prey, so you have to watch what you eat.